Hi, this is your pandemic potter, Kathy Dodson. I'm a member of the Sally Jones Pottery Summer Staff here in Montreat. And today we're gonna to be making little houses. And there are a few supplies you need to assemble before you get started. Along with your slab of clay, you should have picked up a pattern for the little house. If you did not get one, you can email uh, um, the studio and they will send you a copy or you can stop by and um, they will leave a copy for you. Uh, in addition to that, you'll need a few other tools, uh, something to roll out the, um, the pattern on your clay with, a jar that has smooth sides is handy. Um, you also need something that you can use as a cutting tool and these bamboo skewers that have a sharp point are handy. Chopsticks are a good tool as well as um, tongue depressors or popsicle sticks, anything that's smooth that will enable you um, to even out your edges. Uh, plastic utensils are handy. You can use a knife or a spoon or a fork. And um, if you have an old paintbrush, those are good for applying slip. You should have gotten some slip with your clay, which is um, simply the uh, clay and water mud that we use as uh, a glue when we put two pieces of clay together. A pencil is handy, um, as well as a straw that's good for poking holes. Um, there are also uh, clay suppliers that have these um, hole punches and, and other tools that you can use to make texture. A scrap of burlap or an old produce bag makes a good texture. A uh, piece, a scrap of lace is also a good texture. You can see that this little house has had um, some lace texture applied to it. This is texture made with a piece of rebar. And this, this is a piece that really just has uh, the canvas that it was rolled out on. Um, this has sort of a striated texture. Texture is nice because it gives the glaze a place to pool and collect and create some color interest. So um, I'll give you a minute to uh, assemble your supplies. You might wanna get a, a small container of water uh, to rinse your hands in along with a cloth. Um, I like to keep a towel on my lap. Clay's kind of a messy operation and if you need to take a break, it's nice to be able to rinse off your hands before you do anything else. It's also good um, for cleaning off your tools because dried clay will make a mark on your um, wet clay. So it's good to keep your tools cleaned off. If your work surface is um, delicate, you can cover it with a piece of, of plastic. This is an old shower curtain that I put on my table. Um, you can use a tablecloth or um, it's also nice <clears throat> to have some parchment paper or cardboard to keep your clay from sticking to the plastic surface. If you have an old cereal box, you can cut it up and that makes a good work surface for your project. So take a minute, get your supplies assembled and we'll get started. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is to lay out your slab on your, I've got this on a piece of parchment paper and lay out your pattern pieces so that you'll make sure that uh, you have enough clay and um, take your uh, sharp tool and just lightly trace around your pattern. And I like to put flat edges together when I can so that I have, um, I'm not wasting any clay. So I'm just gonna trace around my pattern pieces. And then that way I'll know uh, approximately where the shapes will be and I can um, then start putting some texture on before I actually cut them out. You got two, a front and a back, two roof pieces, um, two side walls, and then this is my base, and I think I'm going to make my base a little bit, about the same width, but a little bit longer. than the pattern shows. So there are all my pieces and I'm gonna lay them aside. And now what I wanna do is put a little texture on there. And um, 
think burlap is a good texture for the side walls. So I'm just gonna roll a little bit. Your slab ought to be plenty thick to allow you to thin it just a little bit as you roll out some texture. And um, I think I think maybe on the, the roof, it would be good to have a little burlap texture. You can also just take your uh, sharp tool, a fork, or your um, skewer and make some parallel lines. This is not an exact science. It's just nice to have a little bit of, of interest. Now, on the base, um, you can also just take, um, I think I'm gonna take my straw and make some just random little circles just to give the, the um, glaze a, a place to pool, maybe a little along the side. You can also take your sharp tool and um, make some lines, just the suggestion that there's grass. So um, on the front and back of my house, I think I'm gonna use um, a little bit of lace. I think I'll lay it this way. Press till I've got the impression of the lace across the front and back. So now I'm ready to place my pattern pieces back and cut around them. And the pieces are gonna be a little bit larger than they were since I have pressed a little bit. And so I'm gonna take my pointed skewer and trace around the edges of my pattern. So now I've got my two walls. And you'll notice that your um, pattern pieces are labeled so that you can match them up. And so it's kind of nice to think about that as you, um, before you take the pattern pieces away. It can, it can be a little bit, as I said, like a challenging puzzle when you're trying to assemble the pieces of your house. And the roof, where it comes to a point at the A1 side at the top, has a beveled edge and so I'm gonna slant my skewer when I cut so that there's not the thickness at the top where the roof comes together at the peak. And if your bevel isn't as successful, you can always trim some of that clay. Okay, so Let's move our pieces away, take away the scraps. And it's really handy if you'll um, take your scraps and keep them under plastic so that they don't dry out because we may decide to do something with those scraps later and you'll have a little piece of, of slab reserved if you wanna make something to add to your house, uh, an awning or uh, maybe a little squirrel or a bear for the front porch. If, if you're interested in a bear on your porch, I don't know. So I'm just gonna carefully lay out the, um, the scraps that I pull away. And this one didn't get cut all the way through, so I'm gonna trim that a little bit more.
set my roof aside. There's my base. So this is gonna go back under the plastic so that it doesn't dry out. So here's my base for my uh, little house. And before you start assembling, take some care to smooth out your cut edges. Anywhere that you have a cut edge is going to uh, become sharp after you fire it. So take your, your base and with your fingers just smooth it. This clay is um, pretty soft and um, I can smooth a little now and then once it has been out in the air for a few hours it'll become not quite so um, soft and I can smooth it even more with my finger or with a credit card or um, other smooth edge tool and kind of brush away and collect the crumbs because once they dry um, they'll make marks on your piece that you probably would rather not have. I'm going to take a minute right now and write my name on the bottom using a pencil. It does not have to be a sharp pencil, um, but it's better to use a pencil than your pointed skewer because um, when, when the clay is fired, it shrinks. And so sometimes really thin lines made with a skewer disappear. So make sure you've got a recognizable um, initial or name on the bottom. A lot of initials are similar, so unless you've got um, an unusual initial, uh, mine has a Y in it, so that's kind of unusual, and um, make sure that it'll be something you can, can recognize. Everyone, everyone assumes that their piece will be unique and uh, immediately recognizable, and they're always surprised when they see a number that looks so similar when they come out of the kiln. So I'm going to smooth the bottom just a little bit. I kind of like to put the date. And you've got plenty of room to write on the bottom of your piece. Smooth away any crumbs. I'm going to pick those up. So there's my base. And so I'm going to take my, my front and my back of my house, and I'm going to think about what might be nice. I'm going to take a look at the front and back pieces of my house and think about what I might like to do in the way of windows and doors smooth the edges of that just a little bit. Um, this one has um, a little triangular window and a, a birdhouse sort of a hole. Um, this one has a door that is left ajar. You can also just cut uh, an open door. This one has some little square windows this one has a bunch of little windows. So you can do whatever pleases you. Um, this one has a little bit in addition to this monster cat. It has a little awning that was added um, and uh, some windows. This one has even has a little vine crawling up the side. It's your house. You can do anything you want. I think for mine, I'm going to put um, a little hole, a little window at the top. With my straw. And clay shrinks um, so that these houses are going to be uh, a, maybe three quarters of an inch smaller than the pattern pieces show. This pattern looks like I may have cut it a little bit crooked, so I'm going to trim him a little bit. Keep my scraps assembled. And 
for a door, I think I may use, um, this is a, a needle tool, a, a cutting tool. I think I'm gonna make a door that sort of echoes the shape of the house. So it's gonna be a little bit bigger at the top. Lift that out. It's just gonna, this house is gonna have an open door policy. But I'll, I'll show you also how to do a, a door that's left ajar. I'm gonna smooth the edges just a little bit. And let's make a back door that's open. So you cut down just one side. And then I'm going to take just a little bit out of the hinge side so that it's not quite so thick there. And when you stand your, your um, house up, you can tip your door open. Now, this clay is um, fairly thick, so you may want to cut away some of the thickness of your door unless you just really uh, like the idea of a really thick door. This door is, is a little heavy for me, so I'm going to take a little bit of clay off. And so then I, when I stand my door up, uh, my house up, I can leave my door just a little bit open. I'm going to smooth that edge a little bit and maybe make um, a couple more windows. You can make it symmetrical or not as you choose. Punch out the, the cutaway pieces. And the inside is not gonna show as much, so you really don't have to worry as much about smoothing the inside edges as you do the outside edges. So there's that. Now, let's take our sides, and you can put some windows in the side of your house or not. I'm going to smooth my edges just a little bit. And go ahead and stand my front and back pieces up. And this is where it takes a little bit of, of finesse. Um, decide if you want your, um, your side walls to be on the outside of your front walls or on the inside. It makes it a little bit wider if you put them on the inside and I kind of prefer that. And so I'm gonna take my house and place it down, put my other wall with its burlap texture facing out. And so now I know where they're gonna sit and I'm just gonna kind of explode the house like this. So wherever you join two pieces of clay, you need to rough up the texture so that, that when it's fired, uh, the clays mold to meld together. And the way you do that is by taking a sharp object, your sharp tool, and you make some little hatch marks where the edges of clay will meet. They don't have to be neat you just rough up, you're just roughing up the texture a little bit, all the way up the edge where the side of the house will meet. Now here are my side walls that are gonna meet the front walls. So the edge of this piece is where I'm gonna apply the hatch marks. And I haven't taken much care in smoothing out my edges because um, that's going to happen when I, after I put the pieces together. So here's the other side. I'm going to score that. Score the other edge. And now they're ready to be put together as soon as I get a little bit of slip. And your same tool is good for applying a little bit of slip. Um, I have a... a um, an old paintbrush that I also like to use. It doesn't take a whole lot of slip. I'm just gonna smooth a little on the, the edge there. And 
you don't want so much that it oozes out um, the sides when you assemble your piece. So I'm just going to kind of smooth out my slip. I just want it to go down inside those roughed up edges. So I'm going to take my side piece and press it and take a smoothing tool. It can be your, your spoon and just smooth the edge where your two pieces come together so that it's virtually invisible. And you can see I'm losing a little bit of my texture in doing this, but I can go back and add a little bit of texture. Let's put the other side wall on there as well while we're, we have it flat. Press it down a little bit and take your, your smoothing tool and smooth that seam till it's virtually invisible. So now I'm gonna stand my house up where I want it on my base and take the front wall and it goes in place and just feel where your, um, where your pieces, I'm gonna take it off so you can see it better. And you're just gonna, you can use your finger and hold it on the inside where you're putting a little bit of pressure to smooth out your seam without caving in your house. So I'm gonna flip it over. You should be able to do this with it upright and you can just reach your finger inside to support your wall. I'm gonna pull a little clay from the front of the house around the side to make sure that my seam is sealed. Okay, so we're gonna sit our little house back on its, on its place and let's take our skewer and make a little bit of a, a base, score the base a little bit so that you'll be sure your house doesn't blow away in the event of strong winds. So I'm just gonna make a little square and take a little bit of my slip and plop my house down. And you can take your skewer and smooth your, your, um, the seam where your house, whoop, where your house meets your um, base, press down. And I'm gonna press my door that's ajar open just a little bit so that it will look welcoming, smooth your door out just a little bit. Okay, let's take a look at our roof pieces. And you can see <laughs> I beveled one of these the wrong angle, so I'm gonna, I just didn't take away the scraps, what I did. Okay, so there are your two beveled edges where they're gonna meet at the pitch, the peak of the roof. And I'm gonna take my skewer and give that a little bit of scoring and do the same thing for the other side of the roof. Take a little bit of slip. And when I place the, the roof on top of my house, I wanna see where it meets because it overhangs the edge of the house just a little bit. And so I'm gonna take, first I'm gonna score my, the front wall of the house at the top edge. And now I'm gonna score my roof just about a quarter inch from the edge where it's gonna meet the house. That one did not get his fair share of scoring, did he? Take a little bit of slip and apply that to your scored edge and 
put my roof in place. The other side, do the same thing. And then place my roof and sort of adjust, press them in place. And you can see this one, um, put a little piece at the top. You could make a little snake. Um, you can also just smooth it. And um, press your edges together so that there's not a, a visible crack because there's nothing worse than a leaky roof. And smooth your, your edges out. And there are other things that you can add to your little house. And I think, I think I'm gonna add a bird. And um, a bird is a pretty simple thing to make. You can just make him just a real vague suggestion of a bird with a, a sort of a roundish head with a little bit of a point and a, a little bit of a tail. You don't want anything too thin or fragile looking. He's going to be sitting up on a roof. He's going to be huge. This is looks like maybe he's a hawk. So I'm going to rough up my edge a little bit. And I'm not going to add any slip because I think a little slip um, slipped out as I was pushing my roof edges together. But I'm going to, I'm going to score the bottom of my bird and really make sure he's well seated. I'm going to take my smoothing tool and sort of blend him into the pitch of the roof. And he's pretty chunky, so, um, but I don't want him to, to break off. So there is, there's my little bird. You can give him some eyes if you'd like. And um, so, there's your little bird. Now, take a few minutes and smooth all of the edges. Press where the, the roof meets the house so that it, you're sure it doesn't, it's not gonna fly off. And um, take a look at your house and see if there are any other things you'd like to add to it. Um, smooth your base. You want to make sure your base is uh, seated flat on the table. Um, my suggestion is to let it dry for a few hours out in the air without being covered. Um, and that way you can go back when the clay is not quite so wet and give it a final smooth if you, if you feel like you want to add a little texture. I've lost a little as I was manipulating. And um, you can press gently with your your texture fabric if you want to. And um, your little house is finished. So good luck and I hope you have fun. Be sure and um, return it to the Pottery Studio by um, 11 o'clock on Wednesday. Take a minute and think about how you'd like to finish your house, what kind of glaze you'd like. Um, this house is, um, has iron oxide on it and you just dip the, the house in iron oxide. You can leave the iron oxide on where it's darker um, and then take a sponge and wipe it off so that it mostly stays in the, the crevices and that's kind of a fun look. This house was iron oxided and left um, un, unglazed except for the roof and the roof has been uh, has green glaze that's been painted on um, and the other, the rest of the house has been left unglazed. Uh, iron oxide will give you a, a flat finish. Um, you can also dip it in clear if you want it shiny. This one was dipped in um, or painted with white and the roof was painted with um, looks like nutmeg or dark yellow as was the door. Uh, this one has a little, uh, a little flowering uh, vine on the side and um, that's kind of fun. So you can think about if you want to add uh, uh, maybe a window box or um, a little flat awning like this. You want to score and slip a little piece of, of uh, 
rectangle of, of clay to go over your door. That makes a nice little awning. Um, you can add a, a little bear or a cat to the front yard. Just um, think about what you'd like your uh, little house to look like. Enjoy.